one without the other is, is not good. So unless you publish or you know, unless you work closely with the industry right, or ideally people, you know, what will happen is if you don't do these things, you will see tend to become fossilized, right, be atrophic, and we tend to become fossilized and we don't move forward. Right? We're just thinking the old theories, etc., that you know, like the marketing we have power and shape in order for instance, and that we still face power and shape, I don't personally think you know, so uh, and so on. Right? So we should not, you know, live in the past, we should ideally you know, look toward the future. So therefore publishing becomes very important. So you have to be at the first part of knowledge, right? You have to be at the cutting edge. So you have to create on the cutting and top of things rather than being reactive. Right? So I talk about the science and the art of publishing and specifically, right? Some paper writing tips as well, and finally feel some. So, you know, what are some important things? Right? So ultimately there is, uh, you know, we all like to see our name in print, right? You go to a journal and your name is there, but it's a good feeling, there's a doubt on it, right? But what do we do? Right? What can we do to uh, get one, one's name in print? Anybody? You know, what, what are some important criteria according to some of you? There is such that you can Publish. Oh, the no, it's very easy way, right? I mean, we don't want to write articles in newspapers because they don't give that much traction, right? So it is uh, it is prestigious to publish in journals yes. rather than in newspapers. And right? if you publish in newspapers, right, you get publicity. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot more men, men, I mean, many people see your name. Like I know some people who publish. Weekly column, right? The Harish Bhatt of Writing Card, how they do it, the business line. You know, there are so many people, right? Even international, Paul Krumman, etc., they pass, you know, they write these papers. But that is after they pay their dues, you know, by publishing in the top tier journals, right? So, in Australia, we cannot publish in these papers, right? So, what we have to do is, right? You know, it is part science and it is part art, right? So there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that partly it is science, right? So there is a strict, uh, you know, a, 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 I would say strict, but you know, there is some kind of formula, right? There is some kind of formula. So if we apply this formula, then, you know, the chances are it's going to get published, right? So that is a part science. Then it is part art, so definitely, right? You know, if you have a quality product, Marketing, right? It does well, right? So if you have Apple or Samsung, all these iPhones, uh, all these phones are doing well. Because in terms of share quality, right, they are very good, right? So like that, you know, if you have a quality paper that you can sell, then you know it becomes easier for you to publish, right? So the quality counts. But more than that, or equal to that at least, right? It is part of it, right? So the publishing business is a unique business right, in that. So when we send a paper to a journal, there is an editor that you know that receives the paper first. The editor, right, looks at the paper, quickly reads the paper, and after reading the paper, passes on the paper to a set of three reviewers. Right? So these reviewers are unknown to you the author but the author does not know the reviewer the reviewer does not know the author and it's a double line process and you know so and the reviewers and the editor work for free right? so it's a unique thing right? so labor the publishing industry's labor is free right? there is no other uh, possibly you know industry where the labor is free the authors you don't have to pay the authors they work for free the reviewers work for free, the editor works for free, and who makes the money? The publisher makes the money. Right. So that is how the business is. Right. So, but in this process, what happens is the reviewers are, you know, so, you know, I mean, the reviewers review a paper based on their own. Some of them ask for publication charges. Publication? Charges. Not the good journals don't. Right. So usually the money making journals, right, they would ask for publication charges. Otherwise, right, you know, they don't ask for 
charges. So usually no journalist has ever asked for charges. Some of the very top journals, like Journal of Finance, etc., I've heard that they ask. That is because a small charge just to prevent, you know, frivolous entries from coming. That's the purpose of, you know, a very small token fee, right? Uh, so, but the review process is arbitrary. Right? The review process is arbitrary. Right? So the reviewers have their own whims and fancies. They come in with their own biases. So we have to deal with these biases, and when we are reviewers, we have these biases in our sets. So it is not that the reviewers alone have, because authors also are reviewers sometimes. But you know, there is what we call the Dina factor. Right? There, is a, there is no other alternative. Right? So once Winston Churchill was asked, you know, what do you think of democracy? The so Churchill replied that democracy was really bad. That you know. Uh, all kinds of idiots are voting, right? They are illiterate people, they don't know the party's manifesto, nothing like that. So, but they still vote. And, you know, so that's a problem with democracy, right? But then, he said, you know, there is no other alternative. Okay, what's the alternative? Right? That we don't know, right? So, you know, like that. The real process is not ideal, but there is no alternative. So, hence, one has to learn to play the game, right? So, your career depends on so how will you learn to play this game? Plus, of course, let me say, not creation make, you know, uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, it is important, right? So, you know, so first, you know, do's and don'ts uh, is, I think the area that you do research in must be quote unquote hot, right? I mean, right? not not necessary always, right? Not necessary. Because, you know, uh, I mean, just because, uh, you know, something is the, is the, is trendy or the fad of the moment, right, we cannot get into it, right? But at the same time, ideally, it should be hot, right? So, it should be hot. But the problem is, how can one ensure that it is a hot area, right? How can you ensure that it's a hot area? Because all of us, we become, we are human beings and we become involved in our research. We become involved in our research. So we, that is a part of us, that research is a part of us. But it's very difficult to be dispassionate about this research. It's a part of us, it's an extension of our personality life, you know, so to speak. Therefore, we all think that whatever we are doing is hot, right? Because we are doing it, we are involved with it, etc. So why? Ideally, right, it should be hot. So how can one ensure that it is hot period? How do you know whether a topic is a hot topic or not a hot topic? What's the answer? Does anyone have the answer? Anything in India, anything in India, anything in India. Okay, so generally by word of mouth, right? <laughs> word of mouth, one gets to know what is hot and what is not. Sometimes, right, through word of mouth. Like India is okay. well, like, uh, Say for example, they say, you know, I know something that it uh, sells in your proposal or anything. Like that, some big data. Which is obvious. Yeah. 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 So, you know, what you have to do is, you know, uh, there is a process that you have to follow. Right? There is a uh, a site, there is a site that is run by, there is a mail list that is run by the University of Columbia. It is called ELMA. Right? It is called ELMA. I don't know the full form of ELMA. It is from Latin American ELMA. So, what ELMA does is, if you don't subscribe to ELMA, it is a free email listing. Right? So, it is a free email listing. So, they will tell you, for instance, Many journals will call for papers on special issues. Right? Special issue on healthcare marketing, special issue on digital consumer services, etc. Right? So these special issues are announced well in advance. Right? So for instance, if there is a journal of uh, you know healthcare marketing or something like that, 2016 
will be the publication date of this year, of this special issue. The call for papers will be in 2013 January. Two to three years, they give you a lead time. You know, the lead time is two to three years, right? So they will tell you, you know, what, you know. I mean, so these special issues are, I mean, why does a journal have a special issue on a particular topic? Because they want to promote research around that particular topic because they think it is not. Now, otherwise, why would they do that, right? They do that only because they think it's a uh, it's a very hot topic, otherwise they would not do it. So look at the special issues. So things like ILMA will be there in finance, strategy, etc. as well. So you just have to find it and subscribe to it. And then you will know that what are the hot topics. Also, right, in marketing, there is a body called the Marketing Science Institute. Right? There is a body called the Marketing Science Institute. So what this is a industry academy body, right? interface body. Right? This is an industry academy interface body in America. Right? So what they do is every couple of years, right, they tell you right, what are the hot topics, what are the, I mean they categorize topics into gold, silver, bronze or something like that. Right? the three or five categories, right? So that these are the high priority categories. The next is a medium priority, the next is a low priority, then the other categories. So they will tell you that these areas, and how are these designed? Because industry and academy, uh, and academicians, they meet, the, the top industry people, the top academics people, they meet and they try to decide in marketing these Next two to three years, we can decide that these are hot topics. And like that, I'm sure in finance and other areas, you will have, uh, you know, uh, you know. And if you if you have a topic, if you are interested in doing research on a hot topic, so you can go to the website of MSI. Right? You can go to the website, MSI.org or whatever, and there you can see, you know, what are the hot topics. And we also give grants for doing research in these areas. Right? So if you happen to do research in that area, you can apply for a grant and if your, if your proposal is good enough, they will give you a grant and that is considered the prestigious. And then you get a grant from any sign or some funding for right? You know, and others area and but more important than a hot topic, right? You have to select a topic and Usually most topics are research worthy. So in marketing, whether it's land extinction or you know emotions, you know how we use emotions in marketing, or social media marketing, and whatever, right? Or you know, or some particular kind of advertising appeals, right? So all these areas are research worthy, right? So more than selecting a hot topic and doing a shoddy job on a hot topic, right? Really selecting the, the right topic that you know and doing a quality job on that topic that is more important. Right? So and generally what happens is you see it's like this. Right? So when you when you turn 18, let's say many of you when you turn 18, you have learned to drive a car, right? You learn to drive a car. So initially when you learn to drive a car, it is quite cumbersome and painful. So that learning curve initially is very steep, right? It's very, very steep. It's hard. First two months or one month you struggle and some, sometimes I know people that reverse improperly, they dash the gate and so on, right? You know, all these things happen. It's part of growing of, of, of learning how. But after, but you invest all that time and effort. Why? Because you know that for the rest of your life, you, this driving skill is going to come in useful for you. Right? So that is why you don't mind spending one or two months in Syria in the morning in Burger, how to drive, etc. Because the rest of your life you're going to live off this. Right? So likewise, you know, many times what happens is in research, we should not be what is called a cherry picker. 
cherry picker means you know, choose any topic that is currently hot, right? Do some work on it, publish it somewhere, etc. And then what happens is in the long run that is not good. Right? In the long run that is not good because you know your interests are too diverse and therefore you can't specialize properly in any one you know, in your body of work. And therefore, you know, you spend once we spend a lot of time and effort in a particular area of research, in a body of research for some HR people, it might be employee satisfaction, you know, for something like moon blood that is already signal behavior, impulse buying behavior. So I've spent like better part of the decade now working in these areas. Now just because something else is hot, you know, I'm not going to jump to it. It's hard for me, right? Because I've spent all this time, I know the literature really well, right? I know the literature really well. I know the methods, the literature, everything, right? Now for me to learn something new, right, it's going to be hard, right, just because of this point, right. At the same time, the area that you do research in should not be outmoded, right, it should not be outmoded, you know, and, you know, outdated, right. So there are certain, for instance, if you think that is one problem with doing research in something like electronic, uh, you know, if you look at internet marketing, right, some of the concepts that were relevant even 10 years back, are not relevant now, right? because you know, 10 years back there was no Facebook, there was no Twitter. Now there is Facebook, there is Twitter. And 10 years hence, Facebook and Twitter may not be there. There may be something else. This is Facebook and Twitter, right? So whenever you choose a topic, you keep that in mind. If something is very hot. Three years, in other words, by the time you do the research, right? By the time you do the research and get the data and get the results. By that time, some new technology may have come that renders your results redundant. Right? So, you know, you, whenever you have these high-tech topics, you know, they might be the flavor of the moment, but in the long run, you know, you think about it, right? But you have to publish and it's hard, right? Because these things may be, and your findings may be useless. Right? Because technology has come and, you know, like, uh, you know, like for instance, if you do like this, this, this after 10 minutes back, we were discussing about this lady in Bangalore. Unfortunately, she went to the ATM and she got injured, right? Somebody attacked her, etc. So, you know, how do we enhance ATM safety? Suppose your researchers, how do we enhance ATM safety? So, you think it's a very nice topic, but then, you know, there might be some technology that comes that may render your result. Use this right, obsolete, straight away. Right? So you know, I mean, you have to have uh, you know, that in mind. And also, what you must do is go to important conferences in your area. Right? So if you look at the best conferences in your area, internationally, if you look at the best conferences in your area, internationally, right? Try and Go there. Right. Maybe nowadays universities are uh, more liberal in terms of funding. Right. I'm sure a school like BIT will fund you for an international conference. You know, right now, I think that should not be a big right. So you go to the, I mean, send a paper there, somehow get it sent. Like AMA, for instance, is a very prestigious conference. So in the month of February, their winter conference is happening. That is one of the best conferences. And my our paper, my co-author and I, but our paper is in the So she can go there for our behalf. So once you go there, right, you understand what others are doing research on, right? What are the latest methods, right? What are the hot topics, right? What are they doing research on, right? You know, uh, all these things you can understand. So if you just stay here, right? Is hard. When you go there, you, you, you just look around, when you attend all the sessions, then you understand, right? So in marketing, these are the top conferences. Likewise, in other areas, you know, other areas, you, you, you know what the top conferences are. Like in HR, study with AMJ, it's a top conference, for instance, right? Like that, you know, there are, go to the best conferences. And you must go to the best conferences. 
there are conferences are a dime a dozen nowadays. So you have so many conferences, right? You know, but make sure that when you go to the best one, and I want to a very good one. It is many a time I open, right? Many a time I open, right? So when you go there, you see all these others from very good universities, they come and they present their work, and it's a great, great learning experience. Right? So you must go to these conferences. And also, right? So once in a, you know, whenever I get the time, what I do is, even day before yesterday, this is what I was doing. The whole of day before yesterday, or pretty much two thirds of the day, right? I look at the last one year, what are the papers that were published in the Journal of Marketing and the Journal of Marketing Research? These two are among the two best journals in my field, right? That was just looking at all the papers and see what are the papers that were published, what areas did they publish on, what are the methods that were used, right? So this will not only help you for your research, it will also help you for your teaching, right? Because we can incorporate some of the latest findings into our classes because the textbooks are many times outdated, right? Textbooks are outdated, right? So the latest research, right, is there in, in these, uh, you know, in these fields, right? You know, so you must spend, you must earmark some time, earmark some time, you know, and every quarter or every month, you know, earmark some time, go to the top journal and see what is being published here. And nowadays, you know, even the physical copy, we may not have, but that's an ad, you have these uh, expo, etc. I'm sure you can go through it. Right? That's now. And once you the science of publishing, right, the limits of review, right, must be, right? you must do a very extensive limits of review. And more often than not, in India, at least I find that, you know, this is not the case, right? They don't do Say for instance, I will tell you about an example. Right? I'm, I'm an external examiner for many theses with the IMs, right? So in one IM Lucknow thesis, the thesis talks about online anti-branding movements. What it means is that, that there's a site called www.nikesucks.com, right? So you know, like that, the sign for you know, various you know, so people they form this anti Nike group on Facebook or something like that. They bash Nike, right? Now, or Bank of America or whatever. So the topic itself is very interesting, right? That is anti branding. So if there's a site like that, as a manager, suppose I'm Nike, how do I respond to this site? And in that thesis, the student shows very nicely how a no response is a bad strategy. Many companies, what they do, they just stay silent, they do nothing. That is a bad strategy. Empirically, it shows that this no response strategy is not common. Right? But one problem is, right, in this literature review, see so there is a big literature on crisis communication, offline crisis communication. Like the famous case of Johnson & Johnson, you know, many years back when they had their Tylenol or something like that, it was, you know, 40, some people died, how they reacted. The classic uh, case in crisis management. Likewise, for Cadbury's, when they had these worms in their chocolates, how they reacted. So, in other words, this offline crisis management, what are the learnings from the offline crisis management uh, you know, body of knowledge. How can you apply those learnings to online anti-branding movement that was left out in the thesis? That we had just focused on online literature, not the crisis communication. Right? So your literature gave you, right? So I pointed out as an example that you have to look at that literature, right? So you know, you look at related body of literature, Right. It is very important to look how it is ready because the reviewers 
are selected based on their familiarity and expertise with your topic. So there is an area editor and the area editor you know, chooses reviewers based on their areas of expertise. Right? So the reviewers know these the audience literature very, very well. Right? So you must make sure that you know the problem is clearly identified and that is fit by your research. Right? So and often see we uh, when we send papers to journals, we treat reviewers like enemies. Right? We treat them like enemies. Right? They are there to block my path. I want to publish this dirty fellow sitting in the right? What he or she wants to do is block my path to be open, right? You know, so we see them as enemies. You know, that is not the correct way right? because oftentimes most reviewers are positive. They want to, they give constructive criticism, they want to help you, right? They don't want to, they are not against you. However, they have the reputation of the journal to protect. Right? So they just cannot accept everything that comes there. But if they do that, then the journal quality goes down. Right? So they have the reputation of the journal that they have to, cons that they have to be concerned with. But it, even sometimes, if the reviewers are not strictly on our side, the editor is, the editor likes to, what does the editor want? The editor wants the journal to rise in the rankings. See, amongst these journals, just like amongst business groups, there is competition. But IMA wants to be number one, ISB also wants to be number one, IMPACT also. There is, you know, there is it's a vicious competition, right? Just like that, amongst these journals, right, there is a lot of competition. It's a prestige thing. I mean, it's not only a prestige thing, right? So with higher rankings, right, the circulation becomes higher, right? And, you know, the commercial angle as well, right? They get more advertising, so like HBR, etc. And, you know, they can command a premium. So it's also a commercial thing, right? Plus a prestige thing. That is commercial come prestige. So the editor is always looking for interesting papers because that way, if, there, if interesting papers get published in journals, then you know those papers are cited and they are impactful. And if they are impactful and if they are cited, the journal's reputation goes up. And the editor wants encourages uh, you know interesting and new papers. So the editor, editor really is definitely a friend. Right? Now, when they, you cannot send out right whatever paper you have to whatever journal. So by experience, you know, by experience, by word of mouth, etc., we know what a particular journal stands for. Like in marketing, for instance, journal of marketing is very managerially focused. Right? The concepts, etc., there, you know, that takes a backseat. I'm not saying that it's not important. It is also important, but that takes a backseat. There's another prestigious, prestigious journal called Journal of Consumer Psychology, Journal of Consumer Research. In that journal, the managerial angle takes a backseat. The scholarly aspect is the most important. It has to be scholarly, and you know, uh, the literature, the conceptual framework, that is Managerial angle may be purely theoretical, it may not help any manager, it doesn't matter. But they will, take, they will still take the paper. Journal of marketing will never take such a paper. However good your theory is, etc., unless it has a very strong managerial flavor, they will not take the paper. So different journals have different, you know, I mean, USPs. Right? So you must know which journal has what you see. Right? And accordingly position the paper. Right? So the same paper, right? just like what we do in marketing. Right? So you know that there is a, uh, uh, a slogan called uh, Honda Pleasure. Right? What do they say? Why should boys have all the fun? Right? Why should boys have all the fun? 
There's another scooter that sits. Maestro, it's a boy thing. Both are scooters, but one is saying it's a boy thing, the other is saying, why should boys have all the fun? It's a girl scooter, right? So the positioning is different, even if the product is the same. Right? What? Yeah, both are from hero motor. Exactly. That is the icing of the cake theory, right? The both are from the same from you know, company, pretty much. You know, and like that, you might have the same work. But when you submit it to a particular journal, you must highlight, let's say you're submitting it to journal marketing. What should you do? Highlight the managerial language. Right? Highlight the managerial language, right? Play it up. And downplay the obstacles. Oh, so when you submit to JCR, for instance, what should you do? Downplay the managerial language. They're not interested in that. Right? You, you know, make sure that the concepts, etc., are very really strong. Even if the paper is same, it has been tweaked slightly depending upon the target journal. And that's very important. If you don't tweak it, right, you know, then you know straight away you're starting with the handicap. Right? You must tweak it, definitely. Otherwise, you know, you I mean there are many journals. So like you know, you have to tweak it depending upon the you know the journals USP, right? I mean if you don't know the USP. Go through the past issues of the journal, go through the past papers, ask around, ask people who are published in those journals, ask them, right? You know, how did you publish? What did you focus on? What, are the, what is the formula? What are some tricks that you did, etc. So they will be more than happy to share more often than not, right? So recently, a couple of papers, right, they said the fit was gone. There has to be a fit between the paper and the journal, right? And so in general, when you publish any, when you want to publish any research, ideally, right, when the paper should have three contributions, three kinds of contributions. One is for theory, right? That is called a substantive contribution. That is, how do you extend, extend knowledge? Right? How do you extend? the body of work in your area. So let's say that your work is an employee satisfaction, right? What drives employee satisfaction that I've been studying for a long time now, the hygiene factors, motivation factors, etc. So if you're doing something, how do you extend current state of knowledge, right? So that is a theoretical contribution. And what a theoretical contribution that you're making to research. Second is, what is the practical implication of your research? Right? What is the practical implication of your research? Right? And recently, How do you apply it? How do you apply it? Right? What is it? Like for instance, if you look at cigarette packets, right? uh, nowadays we see all these gory images on the cigarette packages with a body of a woman or a man and it shows a wasted lung, etc., etc., right? And this could be you, that's what they would say, right? You know, and so. But there is some very recent research, this is called a fear of you. So they found that this does not work, right? In fact, this is counterproductive. Having such an image increases rather than decreases. And this is what they evidence is. Why? Because they think that this is called a positively biased. That is, bad things happen to others, good things happen to me. Right? <laughs> bad things happen to others. Promotions, marriage, etc. happens to me, but you know, AIDS, other things happen to other people. Right? Not to me. Right? So that is what we all like to believe, right? You know, and therefore, when you see this, you ignore it, and in fact, you know, it, it, it makes smoking more salient and actually increases the smoking. Therefore, right, the policy implication for a government is very clear. Don't have such a message. Right? Do something else which the literature says, right? So that is a practical application, right? You know, that's a practical application. What do we do practically? So that is, you know, you must have managerial implications. And ideally, you know, 
the desert would be a methodological and if you can show that there is something that you did, something that is unique in your method, right? something that is unique in your method, right? that would be, you know, awesome. In fact, that would be awesome. Because, you know, again, you know, then others will look at your method and learn it and apply it. Which means that you are extending, you are contributing to other research. Right? You are making life easier for other researchers down the road. Right? Editors like it, reviewers like it. Right? But it is hard to do. You know, most papers right, don't have methodological contributions. If you have a methodological contribution, you know, it is the icing on the cake. Right? It is like very, very nice. But how do you integrate theory and the method? That you can do. Right? So, for instance, even in the paper that I circulated, the JRCS paper, but we have a unique kind of second order structural equation model. So that is a small methodological contribution. Right? So the method is the theory is there. The, the, the method, see, there are some papers. Should we be unique to our model or in general? In general. In general. Yes. 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 That is, you you use some twist. For example, attitude when you do this way, you can use it for our model. Yeah, that, that is that that is fine. But see, it's like this. See, there are some papers that are major papers that don't have a theory implication. I mean, they have theoretically yes, it'll extend. It'll always extend. They don't have practical implications. No manager, pretty much. They have implications for other researchers, not for managers, data management. So those are purely method papers. Right? There are purely method papers. Like for instance, in one of my working papers, right? See, in fact analysis, there is something called reflective factors. Right? There is something called format of factors. Right? So in the literature, there is always a debate about reflective versus format. Now in this new paper, in this working paper, what we show is that there is a third way out. Let's use the third way, neither reflective nor formative. Right? The third way is superior to both reflective and formative. Right? That is the third way. Right? You know, so that is purely a method. So other researchers in future, if our paper gets published and if they buy into our idea, then the third way will become popular. That will become the default. And the entire tone of research will change. No longer will be reflective from that debate will die because the third way will become popular. That's what we know. And you know, and and so that is the third way goes formation in construct. Yeah, it's a different kind of formation in construct. Right. So this third way will become popular. Right. So there's a purely method way. But there are some other papers where, for instance, there is a paper that I can cite. They have a very nice contribution, a method contribution. There is a paper by Van Tri.
impact. Among other things, they demonstrate how to distinguish between what they call true variety seeking and merely transmission. Right? So that is a nice methodological Right? That's very nice methodological They exactly they describe methodologically how to make it right? So if you have that kind of contribution, your research right, it has a net chance of confidence, right? Yeah. So now say again there are many some kinds of research that are intuitive. Right? That are intuitive. Like you have expectations. If the expectations are met, consumer expectations are met, satisfaction results. When expectations are exceeded, satisfaction results. So that is obvious. Right? That is intuitive. Right? So, but again, just because it's intuitive, it doesn't mean that it has no value. It also has some value. Or there is some other research which is not a priori intuitive. 